This is an excerpt from Alexander von Humboldt's personal narrative of travels to the equinoctial regions of America during the year 1799 to 1804. It's taken from chapter 2.19, and I entitle it Body Painting of the Orinoco Indians. This is recorded for LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording is by Mark Smith of Simpsonville, South Carolina. Red paint being in some sort the only clothing of the Indians, two kinds may be distinguished among them, according as they are more or less affluent. The common decoration of the Caribs, the Otomacs, and the Jerurus is Onoto. Properly, Onoto. This word belongs to the Tamanac Indians. The Maypuris call it Mehepa. The Spanish missionaries say Onotarse, to rub the skin with Onato. Called by the Spaniards Achote, and by the planters of Cayenne, Roku. It is the colouring matter extracted from the pulp of the Bixa oralana. The word Bixa, adopted by botanists, is derived from the ancient language of Haiti, the island of Saint Domingo. Roku, the term commonly used by the French, is derived from the Brazilian word Uruku. The Indian women prepare the anato by throwing the seeds of the plant into a tub filled with water. They beat this water for an hour, and then leave it to deposit the colouring fecula, which is of an intense brick red. After having separated the water, they take out the fecula, dry it between their hands, knead it with the oil of turtle's eggs, and form it into round cakes of three or four ounces weight. When turtle oil is wanting, some tribes mix with the anato the fat of the crocodile. Another pigment, much more valuable, is extracted from a plant of the family of the Bignonier, which M. Bonplan has made known by the name of Bignonia chica. It climbs up and clings to the tallest trees by the aid of tendrils. Its bilabiate flowers are an inch long, of a fine violet color, and disposed by twos or threes. The bipinnate leaves become reddish in drying. The fruit is a pod, filled with winged seeds, and is two feet long. This plant grows spontaneously and in great abundance near Maypures, and in going up the Orinoco, beyond the mouth of the Guaviare, from Santa Barbara to the lofty mountain of Duida, particularly near Esmeralda. We also found it on the banks of the Casacuari. The red pigment of Chica is not obtained from the fruit, like the Onoto, but from the leaves macerated in water. The colouring matter separates in the form of a light powder. It is collected, without being mixed with turtle oil, into little lumps eight or nine inches long, and from two to three high, rounded at the edges. These lumps, when heated, emit an agreeable smell of benzoin. When the chica is subjected to distillation, it yields no sensible traces of ammonia. It is not, like indigo, a substance combined with azote. It dissolves slightly in sulfuric and muriatic acids, and even in alkalis. Ground with oil, the chica furnishes a red color that has a tint of lake. Applied to wool, it might be confounded with matter red. There is no doubt but that the chica, unknown in Europe before our travels, may be employed usefully in the arts. The nations on the Orinoco, by whom this pigment is best prepared, are the Salivas, the Guipunavis, or Guipunavis, they call themselves Uipunavi, the Caveres, and the Piraroas. The processes of infusion and maceration are in general very common among all the nations on the Orinoco. Thus the Maypures carry on a trade of barter with the little loaves of Puruma, which is a vegetable fecula, dried in the manner of indigo, and yielding a very permanent yellow colour. The chemistry of the savage is reduced to the preparation of pigments, that of poisons, and the dulcification of the amylaceous roots, which the aroides and euphorbiaceous plants afford. Most of the missionaries of the upper and lower Orinoco permit the Indians of their missions to paint their skins. It is painful to add that some of them speculate on this barbarous practice of the natives. 
in their huts, pompously called conventos. In the missions the priest's house bears the name of the convent. I have often seen stores of chica, which they sold as high as four francs the cake. To form a just idea of the extravagance of the decoration of these naked Indians, I must observe, that a man of large stature gains with difficulty enough by the labour of a fortnight to procure in exchange the chica necessary to paint himself red. Thus, as we say, in temperate climates of a poor man, he has not enough to clothe himself. You hear the Indians of the Orinoco say, That man is so poor that he has not enough to paint half his body. The little trade in chica is carried on chiefly with the tribes of the lower Orinoco, whose country does not produce the plant which furnishes this much-valued substance. The Caribs and the Automacs paint only the head and the hair with chica, but the Salives possess this pigment in sufficient abundance to cover their whole bodies. When the missionaries send on their own account small cargoes of cacao, tobacco, and chakichiki, ropes made with the petioles of a palm-tree with pinnate leaves, from the Rio Negro to Angostura, they always add some cakes of chica, as being articles of merchandise in great request. The custom of painting is not equally ancient among all the tribes of the Orinoco. It has increased since the time when the powerful nation of the Caribs made frequent incursions into those countries. The victors and the vanquished were alike naked, and to please the conqueror it was necessary to paint like him, and to assume his colour. The influence of the Caribs has now ceased, and they remain circumscribed between the rivers Caroni, Cayuni, and Paraguamuzi, but the Caribbean fashion of painting the whole body is still preserved. The custom has survived the conquest. Does the use of the anato and chica derive its origin from the desire of pleasing and the taste for ornament, so common among the most savage nations? Or must we suppose it to be founded on the observation that these colouring and oily matters with which the skin is plastered preserve it from the sting of the mosquitoes? I have often heard this question discussed in Europe, but in the missions of the Orinoco, and wherever, within the tropics, the air is filled with venomous insects, the inquiry would appear absurd. The Carib and the Salibe, who are painted red, are not less cruelly tormented by the mosquitoes and the zancudos than the Indians whose bodies are plastered with no colour. The sting of the insect causes no swelling in either, and scarcely ever produces those little pustules which occasion such smarting and itching to Europeans recently arrived. But the native and the white suffer equally from the sting, till the insect has withdrawn its sucker from the skin. After a thousand useless essays, M. Bonpland and myself tried the expedient of rubbing our hands and arms with the fat of the crocodile, and the oil of turtle eggs, but we never felt the least relief, and were stung as before. I know that the Laplanders boast of oil and fat as the most useful preservatives, but the insects of Scandinavia are not of the same species as those of the Orinoco. The smoke of tobacco drives away our gnats while it is employed in vain against the zancudos. If the application of fat and astringent substances preserve the inhabitants of these countries from the torment of insects, as Father Guimia alleges, why has not the custom of painting the skin become general on these shores? The pulp of the anato and even the chica are astringent and slightly purgative. Why do so many naked natives paint only the face, though living in the neighbourhood of those who paint the whole body, the Caribs, the Salives, the Tarmanacs, and the Maypures? We are struck with the observation that the Indians of the Orinoco, like the natives of North America, prefer the substances that yield a red colour to every other. Is this predilection founded on the facility with which the savage procures ochreous earths, or the colouring fecula of anato and of chica? I doubt this much. Indigo grows wild in a great part of equinoctial America. This plant, like so many other leguminous plants, would have furnished the natives abundantly with pigments to colour themselves blue like the ancient Britons. The half-clad nations of the temperate zone often paint their skin of the same colour as that with which their clothes are dyed. Yet we see no American tribe painted with indigo. It appears to me probable, 
as I have already hinted above, that the preference given by the Americans to the red colour is generally founded on the tendencies which nations feel to attribute the idea of beauty to whatever characterizes their national physiognomy. Men whose skin is naturally of a brownish red love a red colour. If they be born with a forehead little raised and the head flat, they endeavour to depress the foreheads of their children. If they be distinguished from other nations by a thin beard, they try to eradicate the few hairs that nature has given them. They think themselves embellished in proportion as they heighten the characteristic marks of their race, or of their national conformation. This is the end of Body Painting of the Orinoco Indians.